Welcome everybody to Fundamental Ball. I am your host, Adele. I'm a former point guard, played high school, uh, Division III basketball in college, um, some Division II college as well. Um, ended up doing my internship with the Pittsburgh Steelers instead of pursuing my basketball career. I'm originally a uh, product of street ball at a young age. Learned how to play the point guard position as a true point guard. Had a lot of excellent teachers, a lot of coaches that taught me a lot about the game, and I wanted to pass that on to the you know next generation. I'm a Miami Heat fan, a Miami Heat enthusiast, so the main team we're going to focus on throughout this process is the Miami Heat. I'm going to do some breakdown videos on other players around the league and other fundamentals and aspects of the game. My expertise is going to be shooting and point guard play. I mean, those are my two biggest strengths. I'm an all-around knowledgeable person in terms of the game, but those are going to be the two facets of the game we're going to focus on. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Fundamental Ball with one L and the number two, so Fundamental Ball 2, uh, or Steelers Adele. That's my main account. Um, Steelers Adele is just like the Pittsburgh Steelers, and then my name, Adele, A D E L. Uh, you'll have links in the description uh, down below. So, what we're going to focus on in this video is Kyle Lowry, the addition to the Miami Heat formerly of the championship Toronto Raptors. Um, he brings a lot to the table. Goran Dragic was a terrific player, but Kyle Lowry is a true point guard in, this, in every aspect. Goran Dragic is more of a scoring point guard. Kyle Lowry can score, but his main function is being a true point guard. So before we get into any video breakdown, let's just talk about what a true point guard is. A true point guard gives the team anything that it needs throughout the game. So in the beginning of the game, typically a point guard is going to be a facilitator to get its star players involved, to get its you know players that um, are closer to the basket easy baskets, get your star players easy baskets to get them going. That's the main function of a point guard typically to start off a game. And throughout the game, to find the best matchups for the team. So for example, if you have a weaker defender on a role player that you think that role player can exploit, you're going to look for him in his spots. Um, you're also going to look to get your star players the ball in spots they're most comfortable. As you're going to see with Kyle Lowry, that is just night and day. Um, a breath of fresh air here with the Miami Heat. So before, you know, enough of listening to me talk, let's get into the video. All right, so this is the Atlanta Hawks and Miami Heat in preseason. If you are unaware of who Kyle Lowry is, this is him right here. Let's try to draw a better circle. There he is. That's Kyle. This is Kyle Lowry right there. That's it. He's going to wear number seven, Goran Dragic's old number. Uh, he doesn't have the ball to start the break, but one thing you're going to find out about Kyle Lowry, as every good point guard does, he goes to the basketball. Let's just roll this really quick. Good in last year's playoffs, so he got hurt midway through that. He now, the Miami Heat do this a lot, as uh, Heat fans are probably well aware. The dribble handoff, dribble handoff, you know, is happening here with uh, PJ Tucker. He was also a free agent addition. Bam, setting a little flare screen here. Now, Kyle Lowry can shoot, and he's going to keep the defense honest. But anytime you see these defenders below the three-point line. As a, if you're if you're a, you know a point guard, a shooting guard, small forward, anyone that can shoot the ball with a, a percentage above 35 percent, you're going to take this jump shot. If you, you see all this room, this is just this is just too much space for an NBA point guard. 
you can't go under the screen on Lowry. Like that that's just bad defense by Trey Young. I know it's preseason, but it's really bad defense. Um, we'll we'll take a look here. Kyle Lowry. Eastern Conference final against the Bucks. Three for Lowry Kaboom. So right there you can see like Goran Dragic, Kyle Lowry brings the ability to shoot the ball if people go under the screen instead of chase. But what I'm going to really highlight in these next few clips is Kyle Lowry's ability to move the ball, keep his head up instead of dribble. Um, he's looking to pass even before he starts to dribble. Uh, it's 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 going to be a game changer for the Miami Heat. It's really going to help Bam Adebayo and Jimmy Butler. Alright, let's back this up. As you can see, this is about to be an and there's the hit ahead. You're gonna see it all to Bam out of bio for an easy bucket. Trey Young missing the three. Loose ball rebound. Kyle Lowry has just received the pass. And as you can see, his eyes are already down court. He hasn't even taken a dribble yet. His eyes are down court before he even takes a dribble. And this is just going to create so much early offense and easy baskets for the Miami Heat. It's not going to be a grind. And hopefully we won't get those third quarter letdowns as we typically got in the past because we can get some easy buckets even in those, you know, when our offense isn't flowing and bodies aren't moving the way that they uh, typically are or we're not in sync. This will be a great way for... Uh, the Miami Heat to get some early, easy baskets in transition. So if you just take a look, I mean, his, you can see where his eyes are. His eyes are, And this is going to be a theme in this first quarter over and over and over again. Let's take a look at the next clip. The Heat have made their first four shots, and they've turned it a couple stops in a row. Now, this is early in the basketball game. It's 5-11, to 11, the Heat are up. P.J. Tucker hasn't shot the ball yet. Kyle Lowry's already made a three. So you would think, with all this room, everybody into the paint, Kyle Lowry would shoot this. But what, go back to what I said about what a true point guard's role is, especially early in the game. True point guard's role is to get everybody involved. So even before he even looks at the basket, Kyle Lowry is going to get the ball. His eyes are going to go right here to P.J. Tucker. So you're going to get a pass immediately, even before you know he gets an opportunity to set his feet and shoot a three or whatever. He's looking to get P.J. Tucker involved in the game early. And we'll just let that roll. Now, this is going to pay off <clears throat> later on, especially in playoffs and big games down the stretch. The reason why I say this is going to pay off, now that P.J. Tucker is involved in the game, and it comes down to the fourth quarter, and there the other team is tilting the defense towards your star players, Bam Adebayo, Jimmy Butler, Tyler Hero, Kyle Lowry, <clears throat> Duncan Robinson. you got to leave something open. You can't take everything away. So that corner three is going to be there for P.J. Tucker over and over and over again. This coming season, this coming playoffs, it's going to be there. And if you get him involved early, he's going to have a rhythm going into you know, clutch moments. And when players have a rhythm, they're going to perform much, much better. Let's take a look at this next clip. John, they were a, a dominant team down the stretch of last season. It was amazing how they flipped the script. All right, so let's look at this upcoming clip here by Kyle Lowry. What's going to happen is most people see the highlight of the lob and the dunk. Tyler Hero is going to throw the ball, lob it up to Bam on a bio, and you're going to see the dunk. What a lot of people miss is the subtleties of what Kyle Lowry does. He puts this pass right on the money, on the curl, so that Tyler Hero can catch it in stride in rhythm, and he can make a decision to either shoot a floater, go all the way to the rim, or lob the Bam on a bio. It creates a two-on-one. If the pass is late, the pass is inaccurate, this play doesn't work. 
John, they were a, a, a dominant team down the stretch of last season. They so we'll pause right there. You can see Tyler Hero. Now this is another good fundamental tip. When you come off of screens, you want to come off of your guy's hip and shoulder. You want to rub against your own teammate's shoulder and hip. That's because it's going to run your defender smack dab into the screen. This pass for Kyle Lowry, he puts it right on Tyler Hero's hands, right where his hands are, right in between the numbers. And this defender, who's on now on Tyler Hero's back, is trailing the play. This defender is now in no man's land because what should happen on this play is he needs to go here. John Collins needs to come across here to help on a lot. But this pass is in the, in, right in the right spot. It happens so fast that his eyes draw him to Tyler Hero. He loses sight of Bam, who cuts back door for the lob. You'll, you'll take a look when we run it. It's all set up by the pinpoint pass by Kyle Lowry. It's a small detail, but that's what we're here for at Fundamental Ball. How they flipped the script. They were really and there's the lob. Now I'll give the I'll give John Collins credit for this in the in the Atlanta Hawks defense. The credit I'll give is this is Duncan Robinson. He shoots over forty percent from three last year. I mean, the year before that he shot forty four or forty five percent. So John Collins isn't likely in the scouting report going to leave Duncan uh, because of this you know with this flare screen over here. But that puts. Like I said, that pinpoint pass by Kyle Lowry under the magnify on under the microscope, it makes this whole play work because he can't come over to help. The defender then goes into trail. He's on Tyler's back. Tyler can either go to the hoop or lob at the Bam, and now the defender is on the outside of Bam Adebayo instead of in between him and the rim, and that's what caused this whole play. Alright, so now Cal Lowry has gone to the bench. I'm going to show you some of the backup point guard play and how that differs from the all-star championship play of Cal Lowry. Um, Gabe Vincent's a very good player. Uh, he did you know, a lot of hard work to improve his game. I like what he's done. But there's a stark difference between him and Cal Lowry. Now, there's going to be two breakdowns on this play. One's an error of the point guard, which is Gabe Vincent. Another one's an error of his teammates. It could either be on Markeith Morris. So this is Gabe Vincent. This is Markeith Morris. This is Dwayne Dedman. It's one of these three where the breakdown is. Um, without knowing the responsibilities of the Heat offense, I couldn't tell you where the breakdown occurs, but I believe it's on Markeith Morris. Or it could be Dedman, because Dedman, I mean, he shoots threes, but not nearly as a high, at a high percentage, you know, to shoot. You don't, you want him out hovering at three point line. So this is a nice left to right crossover by Gabe Vincent. If you'll take a look, he puts a nice, he puts a nice little in and out move on Solomon Hill here. Now, if you take a look, Gabe isn't the quickest player. So you can see him struggling to try to beat um Solomon Hill off the dribble. His his body lean is he looks off balance to be quite honest with you. And usually players get off balance like that and when they're trying to make their body go quicker than they actually can go. It's usually what happens. Um, now right here is where he makes his mistake. He picks his dribble up. This is this is way too far from the basket. He's not dunking the ball from here. He's not really laying the ball up from there. This is more like an in-between push shot if he's going to shoot it at all. The mistake that he makes, one, he's not athletic enough. Two, he's late on this pass. Because he wants to go here with the ball. 
But Gallo's 6'10". So since Gallo's 6'10", to get it over his arms, he'd have to lob it if he wanted to get it there. This is too late. He, 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 he's late on that pass. So he, had, he, had, there, he has options. And if you take a look here, Lou Williams has played a lot of basketball. His eyes are in the passing lane. His eyes are right here, into the passing lane. So I'm going to run this through, and then we're going to back it up a second just so you can see what he could have done better and where the other mistake was on the other Heat player. So he left his feet to make a pass, and as you can see, it's getting picked up. So we back it back up. All right. So being that he didn't see the pass early enough, what could he have done? He could have kept his dribble, and he could have attacked Gallinari. If he would have attacked Gallinari, he could have made this pass on the baseline, or if um, Lou Williams drops down, that means this guy would be one pass away from Morris. He'd have to take Morris away. Matt Struess, very good three-point shooter, drift over this way, create some space. He would have, he would have this pass over here to Struess. So those are the two options that he has available to him on this play. Now, he was guarding Morris. This is the other mistake. If he dives to take this pass away or to take this pass away, Morris has to roll down the middle of the paint. Because as you'll see, when Gabe Vincent leaves his feet, he shoots the gap, D'Lo comes over, D'Lo Gallinari comes over, and he'd have, if he'd roll to the basket, he has an easy layup. Easy layup if you, if you take a look. Back it up just one more time. He's fearless. It's Vincent, Struess, Morris, Deadman. You see all this space? Look at all this space. And it would be a much easier pass on Vincent if he would be rolling hard down the lane. So two mistakes on that play. A big difference with Lowry, because Lowry would have kept his dribble alive. You never want to leave your feet like that to make a pass. All right, now we have Kyle Lowry back in the game. <clears throat> and as you can see, he's going to push the pace. Even whenever it's not on a, a long rebound, you know, just inbounding a ball. He's going to push the pace. And it's because his eyes are always up. Let's start to roll this thing. And then we'll break it down. So again, everybody's going to focus on the reverse dunk by Bam Adebayo. Which is a super athletic play. But, how does this play get made by Lowry? Compared to what we... Right here. This is how you figure it out. You can see where are our players. How is the spacing? Duncan, trailing, 40-some percent three-point shooter. Morris, he can shoot the three. We got a guy in the corner off screen that you can't see. There's Bam. And then we likely have somebody in the opposite corner that we can't see on the screen. Now, Lowry, if you take a look at his eyes, where is he looking? All the way down here. Because there's this, all this open space. The great point guards, the great scoring guards, the great players of any generation, they're not worried about the guy guarding them. They're really not. Like, this guy is not affecting, first of all, this is horrible defense. Um, I can't tell who this player is, but he has all this line of sight because nobody's in front of him. He should be back here already, cutting off Lowry. But he's not. 
He's somehow in this trail position, which is really poor defense. Let's move his forward a frame. So remember, I said, where was Lowry looking? He was looking down here. Why? Because there's all this space. There's nobody down there. Let's roll that some more, see where he puts his pass. Now this is Trey Young. He's like six foot. He's no shot against Bam. But he puts his ball right where only Bam can get it. Uh, probably more like up there. Because <laughs> Bam jumps through the roof. Oh, there was nobody in the corner. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, there was nobody in this corner. So this, I was wrong about that. So nobody was in the corner, but that meant this whole section of the floor was open. Yeah, that's awful defense. Heads up point guard play by Kyle Lowry. Those were the type of easy baskets Bam wasn't getting in the past. Now, we're going to look at some more of these examples in contrast that the season goes along. But I hope that was just, you know, some good representative, representative samples for you to get a clear understanding of what Kyle Lowry brings to the team fundamentally and how it's going to help this team improve. Um, if I, I don't have the numbers in front of me, but I believe Lowry had like 12, 15 assists in his first half. So... It was uh, a sight to behold. It was something beautiful to watch. I'm excited for the Miami Heat's future, and I'm excited for watching Kyle Lowry play this season with the Heat. Um, so if you have any thoughts, comments, uh, please um, leave those in the comment section below. You can tweet me on Twitter at Steelers Adele or Fundamental Ball 2, 1L in the ball. And, uh, yeah, um, I appreciate your support. I hope you liked it. I hope you learned something from it. Um, we're going to do a lot more of these. This is a, just a, a rough starting point because I tend to want things to be perfect. I guess that's the point guard in me. Um, and I tend not to put anything out unless I feel it's perfect. Being that I know this isn't perfect, this is a big step for me. I just want to be able to get this out there. Um, to start teaching people, people that want to learn, people that love the game, want to talk the game. That's my whole purpose of this channel. So I hope you enjoy. If you do enjoy, like it. If you don't like it, dislike it. Um, leave me a comment below why you don't like it or what you, you know, what your opinion is that um, something I may have missed or something you disagree with. That's fine too. If you do like it, not only like but hit the subscribe button as well and a little bell icon for future uh, videos and breakdowns. I will see you guys later. Uh, thank you for, for listening, and I look forward to uh, doing a lot more of these in the future. Take care.